Hello everybody and welcome to your next tutorial. So for those of you who are regular viewers uh, that are used to watching my Allegro series or anything else uh, platform or whatever, uh, this isn't a part of the series. Uh, for school we we, ha we have an assignment, it's due sometime next week and some people are having a bit of troubles or, or just want to see how I do it and stuff like that so uh, this video is um, is about the assignment now for those of you who don't know the, about the assignment and wanna watch this video basically we have to get some user input uh, we have to get input from the user yeah um, in C not C++ in C and from and the user has to input the amount of students that are enrolling in a certain program I guess and using calculations we have to um, see how many sections we need uh, the maximum capacity for each class section is 35 so you have to find out the max amount of, of sections the standard section so I guess the average amount of people in each section uh, the last section which is um, the people the amount of people in the last class I guess and the cost factor which is uh, this formula right here so for the people in my in my class or any future people in this course or whatever uh, this is working code right here now you can copy it if you want but I wouldn't advise you to copy it because one that's plagiarism and two if you and another person copy the same code then that's plagiarism again I guess and you guys can get caught for that I wouldn't advise it and just so you know this is not the code I submitted so uh, so yeah I won't so yeah it's not my same code but I, I simplified it um, to what we've actually learned in class up to this point uh, so you should fairly understand what's going on so let's start off by talking about the variables now, first of all, I have temp students and I have students right here as a float. Now, I'll explain why I have two different things later. So, we have our sections, we have our standard section, we have our last section, our max capacity, and forget the test. The test was just to, or, yeah, I'll keep the test to show you something. And then we have our float for our cost factor and we have students. Now, notice the way I name uh, my variables. There's different naming schemes. Um, there's rules for naming variables as we learned in class, but the naming scheme I use, I believe is called Hungarian notation. And for variable names, what you do is if they contain like two different words, you started off the first word with a lowercase letter and every other word after that, you started with an uppercase letter. Uh, I do this to specify the difference between variables. And then when we get into functions and stuff, I start off my functions with uh, uppercase. So then I kind of distinct between what a variable is and a function is in the naming scheme. But it's up to you which naming scheme you want to use. Just thought I would throw that in there. So first of all, let's look at tests right now. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I guess I'll, I'll just comment this out. Okay, so I'm going to do printf, and I'm going to do percent %d, and I'm going to uh, put test. So while this is building, uh, what I'm showing you is that whenever we have, if, if we input a floating point value or whatever into an integer type variable, it's going to convert it to an integer. And regular math, and regular math, whatever, if, if if the variable is like say f 0.5 or higher then you round up and if it's less than that you round down in the case of uh, C programming and, and a lot of other languages an integer will round everything down right uh, but for this for this subject we need everything to be rounded up now there's many ways to round up which is what I'll show you but I'm just gonna show you just you know I'm not lying that everything rounds down so right now I, I entered a float value into an integer type variable and once I run this program and if you're using Visual Studio like me run it using control F5 don't click F5 or it'll open and close too quickly uh, so let's wait for it to run it runs slower because of my screen recorder anyways so you see we get the value 30 so 30.9 was rounded down to 30 okay so just let me exit that so that was just to show you that it rounds down so you know I'm not lying and you'll see the significance of why I said that later okay uh, so to start off our program it's always good to prompt the user when they're inputting the the teacher or the professor is gonna know 
what we're inputting but what he should be inputting but it always makes sense to prompt the user what to put in okay and so they they enter the amount of students and we use the scan that function to store that and we're going to store that in our integer variable called temp students now the reason I, I made it stored an integer and then I made students equal to our integer uh, variable so our float is equal to our integer now the reason why we need that is for um, this section down here so we say that sections is equal to students divided by our max capacity which is 35 plus 0 0.99 so what is going on here okay so let us take a number uh, such as 364 so that's the example on on the on the website right so let's, let's say the students is equal to oh sorry so students is equal to 364 okay so what we're gonna do what we notice that sections is an integer type right so let's say let's say we made students an integer type okay what would happen is that when we did students divided by max capacity this whole value will return an integer so if I take out my calculator right now if we do 364 divided by 35 we get 10.4 but because both of, if students was an integer variable right what it what would happen is that it would change uh, the value would round it down equal and it would make this value 10 okay and then uh, we would get an incorrect calculation so but since students is a float value once we do uh, students divided by max capacity then it's gonna return the value 10.4 like we see right here so as we said we wanted to round up and this is what the 0 0.99 uh, represents okay so for example say uh, any anything any decimal value that is greater than uh, greater than 0 so if it's not a whole number we want to round it up so we established that everything an integer rounds everything down using the C programming language so if we add so if we do plus 0 0.99 right here and we click equals we will get 11.39 right and then since sections is equal to an integer it's gonna round that and it's gonna be equal to 11 so using that little trick right there we just rounded it up um, to the value 11 now why do we use 0 0.99 say the value say our students is equal to uh, 350 so we do 350 divided by uh, 35 so we get a whole number 10 if we do plus 0 0.99 the value is going to be 10.99 and therefore it's going to round it down to 10 so it will give us the correct value either way so we add it point plus we add plus 0 0.99 so depending on the value if it's a whole number it will keep it a whole number and if it's not a whole number then it will round it up which is what we need okay so that's where that comes in so we using this method if the value input is equal to 364 then the amount of sections we should have is equal to 11. so then if we go to our standard section now the standards the calculation that will get that is students divided by sections okay so we need to say uh so let me i should have kept the calculator so if our if our sections is equal to 11 then we'll say 364 divided by 11 and the value we get is 33.0909 uh, whatever so if we say uh, plus 0 0.99 the value we get is 34 point whatever and it's going to round it down to 34 so our standard section size should be 34 now as for our last section we use the modulus operator which we learned in class which spits out the remainder between the two so to find out the last uh, section the obvious uh, calculation will be students uh, modulus the standard sections right so it'll give us what's left over uh, based on the um, um, the amount of students left over from the amount of sections we specify now why do I use temp students instead of students here well to find a modulus they need to be two integer values and since students and temp students are equal to the same value uh, then uh, we do like this now the reason why I don't just ask for a float and scan F 
It's because if the person enters 30, like, say, 300.4, you can't have a point, a fourth, like, point four of a person, right? So what we do is we get a decimal value, then we, we assign uh, that decimal value to our float, so we make sure it's a whole number regardless. So even if they enter 300.4, I will say that we have 300 students regardless. So anyways, we say temp students modular standard section, so that will give us the remainder. So then if we take out our, cal um, our calculator, so we, we have 364 uh, students, and we'll use a mod command, and that's 34. So what's left over is 24. So in our last section, we should have 24 students. And as for the cost factor, uh, we put 35.0 because if we just put 35, then it's gonna treat uh it's gonna treat the calculation as uh it's gonna treat the calculation as a uh, integer, which is what we don't want. Well, because students is a float type value, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but just in case, we're gonna put 35.0, which will give us a floating point value. And then we divide it by this, and that will give us our floating point value, and that will give us the cost factor. And all we got to do is just print our results to the screen. And remember to put um, point 0.2f because we need to have two decimal places uh, for the cost factor. So if we just build this uh, one last time and then we run it, uh, then we should get the desired result. So I'm... I'm going to put this as part one and I'm going to make a part two to show you a different method to do it because uh, I don't want you guys to really copy my code, right? So I'm going to show you different methods so it gives you kind of an idea on how to do it your own way, right? So this is one method to do it uh, without using casting, type casting or using the seal command. So you just have to add 0 0.99 to it. But there is there is one flaw before I end this tutorial before after I run this there is one flaw to this but it's up to you guys to figure it out and you guys can fix that like with say a while looper or, or something like that so if we enter 364 oh sorry that's what happens when you don't run it without control f5 uh, so if I enter 364 it should match the example on the website uh, of our professor's website so we get the desired results now let me run this one more time and let me input something so let me input uh 1996 so oh man my bad if you can see our last section is equal to one which is what uh the professor doesn't want right he doesn't want our last section to be equal to one or something so what it's up to you since I've given you kind of an insight on how to do this it's up to you to kind of devise on how you're gonna um, split up the minimum capacity and stuff like that uh, so it's I will give you a hint that you can do it using a while loop which we learned in class but it's up to you guys to figure that out uh, so I'm gonna end the tutorial here I'm gonna make a part two for those of you who guys want to see another method on how to do it but thanks for watching this hope you enjoyed it and bye